What are sweeteners? Sweeteners are substances that provide foods and beverages with a sweet taste. They're also used for food fermentation, preservation, browning, and caramelization. What are the different types of sweeteners? Sweeteners could be either natural or artificial. The natural sweeteners are nutritive, which means that they provide minerals and vitamins in addition to sweetness. However, they are generally higher in caloric counts and could result in health problems like obesity and tooth decay, as well as greater health risk for diabetic patients. Despite having little to no caloric value, artificial sweeteners are non-nutritive and their increased consumption may correlate to an increase in sugar cravings, obesity, and diabetes cases. In fact, a 2014 study found that this type of sweetener can change your gut bacteria composition and lead to glucose intolerance, which is the first step towards metabolic syndrome and diabetes in adults. What are some examples of natural sweeteners? Sugar is a natural sweetener but has a high glycemic index, meaning it can significantly impact blood sugar levels, something to avoid as it's linked to chronic disease. Two alternatives that are still natural are honey and maple syrup. Honey, however, is very high in sugar and has about 17 grams of sugar per tablespoon, so it's best to use in moderation. However, it does have more nutritional value when compared to artificial sweeteners. Maple syrup is another caloric sweetener that offers some degree of nutritional value as it has trace minerals such as calcium, magnesium, and potassium. But it's best to use in moderation as well since it has a high glycemic index considering that it has 12 grams of sugar per tablespoon. What are some examples of artificial sweeteners? Some of the most common artificial sweeteners are allulose, erythritol, high fructose corn syrup, and of course, stevia. Allulose is made primarily from corn and tastes about 70% as sweet as sugar. It has a glycemic value of zero, meaning it has no impact on blood sugar. However, it has been seen to cause gastrointestinal symptoms like bloating, flatulence, and nausea when consumed in high doses. Hence, allulose is seen to be a good sweetener as long as it's used in small doses, which is about less than 0.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. Erythritol is similar as it has a glycemic index of zero, meaning it doesn't impact blood sugar levels, but it does have an insulinic index of two, meaning it does affect insulin levels minimally. It too is 70% as sweet as sugar and is considered good for dental health as it doesn't contribute to plaque buildup. However, it also poses the same dangers of gastrointestinal distress in some individuals when consumed in high amounts. High fructose corn syrup is a caloric sweetener and has about 53 calories and 14 grams of sugar per tablespoon. It has little nutritional value and a significant impact on blood sugar levels. It is considered for this reason to have no significant benefit when used as a replacement for sugar. Stevia is the last artificial sweetener that is plant derived and highly refined to have no adverse effects on blood sugar levels. Though it is more expensive than some other options, it is also non-caloric and has shown evidence to even lower blood sugar levels in some clinical trials. So, natural or artificial? Essentially, natural sweeteners in general have more nutritional value than artificial sweeteners, but are often more caloric and can impact blood sugar and insulin levels more significantly. However, these nutrients are ones you can always incorporate into your meals by changing the foods in your diet. For this reason, artificial sweeteners that have little to no impact on blood sugar and insulin levels are seen as beneficial as long as it's used in moderation to avoid gastrointestinal distress. What do you recommend for diabetic patients? As a diabetic patient, it is best to consume low-calorie sweeteners as they don't impact blood sugar levels. Some of these include stevia, tagatose, aspartame, and erythritol. You should also try to maximize your use of naturally sweet foods like strawberries, dates, and mangoes. Keep in mind that you should still limit your total sugar intake even when using these low-calorie sweeteners, as the more your palate is exposed to sweet taste, the more you will crave sweet food, which is exactly what you're trying to avoid. Sweetness, sugar, uh, liquid calories. So you can see is that um, water is the best beverage, but I said freshen up a little bit. So this is, you know, when it was the carbonate one here, you can see it has no calories, a little bit of sodium of five milligrams. So, you know, if I had a, a Coke, that would be about 200 calories. This is no calories, no sugar, and uh, I'm trying to drink as much water as I possibly can. What do you do? So again, liquid calories. So the number one beverage should, should be water, but one of the beverages I drink is I drink quite a bit of coffee. And what do you put into it? Um, ideally, what I kind of like is um, almond breeze, 30 calories per, per serving. 
and here's a little food label which you can see. It's not as food friendly as I like to eat. I often use skim milk and the other issue too is that uh, we have some 2% milk and you can see that that's uh, 180 calories, more, more sugar, more calories, more fat in there. So I know using a little bit. One of the things I want to do is just skim milk powder, the way I'm looking at this. And at the supermarket the other day, I saw this thing called uh, the different, different oat milks and different, you know, uh, plant milks. And uh, I'm trying to switch as much of that. This little bit of vanilla taste to it. This is actually 80 calories. And you can see on this label, not bad choices. And again, I put a, a small amount. And so what do you put in your, your coffee? Yes, you can drink it black. That's good. I try to avoid the sweeteners as much as I possibly can because I'm trying to get rid of that, that flavor of sweetness as much as I can. Um, what would you like to try? Sweetness. I have a sweet tooth. So, you know, how do you get that the filling there and how do you keep sugar and things like that as well? So, I had some overnight oats. So, um, and I, I crave carbohydrates. And um, one of the things is that um, how do I highly sweeten things up. Do I use artificial sweeteners or not? Well, what I have here is um, yogurt flavored. And if I'm, yes, I should just use plain yogurt, but I'm, I'm craving for some sweets right now. So I look at the calorie content, there's 35 calories. It has artificial sweeteners. And what I did is I mixed it in to overnight oats. I just put water in there to keep the sugar count low. I'm putting a touch of vanilla in there. And I put some chia seeds in there and give it a little crunch in it. And, and I crave sugar. And if you look at chia seeds here, you can see the, the, the label is that it has a fair bit of calories. It has some sugar, some fiber content. And I think it's a, a better, better mixture. And uh, mix that all up in there and um, Not bad, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of yogurt, less sugar. How, how do you create your sweet tooth? I try to figure out what to do is that uh, sweeteners, as you know, can stimulate dopamine receptors and it just kind of fills that craving, but it comes back again. So should I just avoid sugar altogether? Can I control the amount? Should I use artificial sweeteners? What I think is that um, the worst is obviously sugar and things like honey and brown sugar, the same thing. I'm not doing too much, but sometimes I put a little bit of honey just because it makes me feel good, but it's not, it's not a healthy food. Artificial sweeteners, well, it might change the microbiome in, in an unfavorable fashion. So we have all these gut bacteria, so it's something to think about. Um, but I do think it's probably a better choice than regular sugar. Better off is to get rid of that sweetness taste as you can. Um, challenge so um, wh what do you do you know I have a sweet tooth and I'm trying to decrease my cravings and I, I seem to do better during the day at night time I seem to sometimes fall apart and I know I have brain receptors dopamine receptors and uh, so I try to eliminate sugar I sometimes try the artificial sweeteners using less amount um, same with the microflora the gut what, 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 what do you think so it is difficult when you have a sweet tooth, then you have these cravings for sugar. And quite often uh, people think that replacing sugar with artificial sweetener is much better and safer option. Sometimes, yes, you need to use some of the artificial sweeteners, but in moderation and they are not always risk free. What we are finding now and most recently, there is more research into looking at the effect of artificial sweeteners at the gut microbiota. You mentioned microflora, that's an old term. Those are not flowers, those are bugs. <laughs> so the microbiome or microbiota in the gut is composition of good and bad bacteria. Hopefully more good bacteria to keep us healthy. They affect not only bowel movements, but overall health. They affect the rest of the body. So if you are taking artificial sweeteners regularly, uh, you will be inducing what we call dysbiosis or disbalance between good and bad bacteria in the gut 
promoting the growth of bad bacteria that can lead to complications that are sometimes beyond only gut health. That can affect your heart, your, your lungs, uh, your energy levels, your liver. So uh, artificial sweeteners, we are still looking at which ones are better or worse, but very careful and in moderation is a recommendation. Yeah. Get to reasonable assumptions. The way I look at it right now is that sugar is sort of like a derivative of cocaine, um, and same with white flour. They're bad foods. Now, I'm trying to eat all non processed foods, and most people out there eat about 60 to 70% of their calories by processing food, so get rid of that. So, in include your gut flora or microbiome is that you want to have real homemade, real food with lots of fiber in there. So, fiber, natural fiber, is a good thing. I do think, though, that uh, on a scale is sugar, white flour, processed food are very bad, that artificial sweeteners are not a health food, but a little bit better, they're less in calories, I'm trying to get as little as I possibly can. So for instance, I've tried to give up diet pop and just go with water, tea, kombucha is one of my favorite drinks at this stage. Um, and uh, we're still learning about what happens to, the, to the, those bacteria in your bowel, what, what they represent at this stage. And mm -hmm. I, I agree with you a bit, Doug. You mentioned the fiber. Uh, not only fiber, but sometimes the things that are occur in the vegetables and fruit, yeah. they call them uh, um, prebiotics. They are kinds of fiber. They are actually food for good bacteria. Uh, they are extremely important. So we call them macrobiota available carbohydrates, or MAC. That's a new term. That means you need to feed your good bacteria in your gut. They will break down fiber and the prebiotics into the beneficial nutrients and promote health. They also have a good effect on the brain and they will actually satisfy cravings in a similar way as sugar does. So it's interesting to note that eating more fiber will actually satisfy the sweet cravings. We're learning more all the time. Stay tuned for more.